the 1968 psychological horror film Rosemary's Baby hit the big screen. The movie was written and directed by Roman Polanski, and it starred Mia Farrow, John Cassavetes, Ruth Gordon, Sidney Blackmere, Maurice Evans, Ralph Bellamy, and is the film debut of Charles Grodin. The movie follows a young pregnant wife in Manhattan who comes to think that her elderly neighbors are members of a satanic cult and that they're grooming her to use her baby for their sick rituals. It's based on a novel by the same name by Ira Levine. The composite of the film takes a B-movie producer and a filmmaker who hasn't been tested in America and also a star that was untested on the big screen and put them all together to make what's considered one of the greatest horror stories to hit the big screen. Rosemary's Baby is kind of the godmother to all of these same themed horror films that involve Satan. It spawned movies like The Exorcist, The Omen, and The Exorcism of Emily Rose. The film is scary, yet elegant. It's eerie, but oddly romantic, completely horrifying in its subject matter, but beautiful in design. It's the product of a meticulous director and a young star who persevered even in the midst of a divorce and a cast and crew that may have ultimately suffered a terrible curse for their part in the film. Even before the novel hit bookstores, it became a really hot property in Hollywood. It caught the eye of director and producer William Castle, best known for his B-movie horror films. At this time in his career, he was really eager to make a prestigious film. He scooped up the rights to the book and sought a deal with Paramount Pictures to get the film made. Producer Robert Evans also saw a lot of potential in the novel and agreed to adapt it for the screen, but he insisted that Castle only work on the film as a producer. Castle wanted to direct the film himself, but he reluctantly agreed to the terms of the deal. Robert Evans ultimately decided on Roman Polanski to direct the movie, making it his American debut. After he was offered the film by Evans, the director immediately became engaged with the novel and loved it, and he decided to write the screenplay himself. When it came time to choose the supporting cast, Polanski did a little something unorthodox. He drew them, feeling that each resident of the Brantford needed a very particular look. He felt like this would in itself make it easier for the casting director to find the proper person. In the casting of the movie, Evans and Polanski didn't always see eye to eye from the start. One thing they did agree on was that Robert Redford would be perfect for the role of Guy Woodhouse, Rosemary's ambitious actor husband. Unfortunately, Paramount and Redford were locked into a contractual dispute at the time, so he wasn't available. The studio headed out searching for others to play this role. Ultimately, Polanski decided on John Cassavetes, who was a talented filmmaker who he was already familiar with. Initially, Mia Farrow was not Polanski's first choice for Rosemary. For the role of Rosemary Woodhouse, Polanski set out to find an all-American actress. His choice was Tuesday Weld, then known for her work in films like The Cincinnati Kid. But Evans and Castle had different ideas totally. They thought Mia Farrow, who was then best known for the TV series Peyton Place, was perfect for the role. After auditioning a few actresses, Polanski ended up agreeing that Mia was the right person for this part. They felt like she was just a little bit left of center, and that's the reason they wanted her. She wasn't just another pretty face. The director and John Cassavetes clashed an awful lot during the production. Cassavetes is still remembered as a titan of the independent film. He was known for his freewheeling, improvisational productions like A Woman Under the Influence. Polanski, on the other hand, was a totally different kind of director, known for his precision 
Although Cassavetes was only working as an actor in the movie, their respective filmmaking styles still clashed. Cassavetes would often improvise and let the moment carry him through the scene, while Polanski would be terribly annoyed if the actor lifted a glass mere inches from where he imagined it to be. Polanski calls his experience on the film with Cassavetes not a very good one. According to Mia Farrow, Polanski's directing style would often involve him acting out the scenes himself to show the actors what he wanted. And this apparently had the effect of convincing the young actress to do a few outrageous things. One of those being where she ate raw liver on camera through several takes of the shot, even though she was a strict vegetarian. Another extreme example of this came in the sequence where Rosemary is attempting to flee the Bramford building, and she walks out into traffic in an effort to quickly cross the street. This wasn't a carefully orchestrated sequence in which streets were blocked off and stunt drivers were employed. She really did simply walk out into the New York street and hope that oncoming cars would stop. This was Polanski's idea. He assured her that nobody will hit a pregnant woman. He was right about that, and the scene was shot several times, with Polanski operating the camera himself. The movie has often been thought to have been cursed, touching a large number of people that were involved in its production, especially the film's director and producer. Rumors of cursed movie sets have kind of been the norm in Hollywood since the Golden Age, but they usually didn't amount to anything more than rumors. In the final scene of the movie, where they celebrate Satan, this kind of pushes the film over the edge, seeing all these actors praise Satan. It's disturbing. And one that really sticks out is seeing the Andy Griffith Show actress Hope Summers, and you might remember she plays Clara Edwards on the show. She's one of the people that is worshiping Satan too. My eyes and my mind didn't want to compute this troubling scene. But there evidently was a price to be paid for all of this. As you know, Roman Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, was slain by the Manson family. The oddity of this attack really makes you wonder because Sharon Tate really had no relationship to the Manson family. So is it possible that Roman Polanski was being hit extremely hard by a curse from the movie that he made? The film's musical composer perished just a few months after completing his work on the film. The 38-year-old fell off a cliff in Los Angeles and suffered a cerebral hemorrhage. He went into a coma for some time before he finally passed away. The producer of the film, William Castle, had kidney failure shortly after the film was done. He also claimed that during this time, he hallucinated about scenes from the movie. He stated that he was very frightened by the results of producing Rosemary's Baby. The writer of the book, Ira Levine, had his life completely fall apart after the film. He began to receive targeted strikes and his wife up and left shortly after the film was released. Despite not believing in witches or Satanism, he said these experiences terrified him as he grew older. As curses go, though, Mia Farrow got off pretty light. At the time, she was married to Frank Sinatra, but she desperately wanted to appear in this movie. As the production stretched on, she began flying back and forth from New York to Los Angeles to try to keep the film going and to keep Sinatra happy. But Sinatra wasn't pleased. Instead of trying to work things out with her, he sent his lawyer to visit the Rosemary's Baby set and have his wife served with divorce papers. Whether you believe these curses are true or not, but in my opinion, these actors end up walking on ground in this movie that I sure don't want any part of. The movie overall is pretty good, and I think you'll enjoy it, even though the end is very disturbing. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.